it's Jess. Welcome back to my garden for another video. So today I'm gonna to be starting my winter garden cleanup and I'm so excited to get out in the garden today, y'all. It is a gorgeous day, clear blue skies, such a huge difference from what we've had all week. It's been gloomy and rainy. We're probably in the low 40s today. It's still dropping below 30 at night, but I'm gonna try and get as much cleaned up as I can and take advantage of this gorgeous weather because we are expecting rain all this week. So let's go ahead and jump right into the cleanup. I wanna show you guys my tree first. So as you can see, my tree is starting to leaf out just barely. These are signs of spring for me. Every time I see this tree starting to bud up, I know it's time to come outside and clean up. But look how clear blue the sky is today, y'all. I'm so excited. So it's a little after 10 a.m. this morning, and I am going to take advantage of the morning sun to do my cleanup first, and then I'll move on to the backyard. So let me flip the camera around and show you guys. I don't have too much to clean up up here, but definitely some cutting back to do. So I'm standing here at my front entry and here is what the front garden bed is currently looking like. Not too much to look at, very bare, very dormant still here. I am in garden zone 7B in North Carolina and today is February 25th when I'm filming this. So everything is just starting to wake up. I do have a few perennials in this bed that I need to just kind of clean up. I did cut them back in fall, but you can see my anemone there needs to be cleaned up a bit. Also my sedum is just starting to peek through. Can you guys see the new growth? Oh, that's so exciting. I just love the signs of spring. It just gets me so excited for a new season. As you can see, my clearance hyacinth bulbs are starting to peek through. I have three over here as well. These are purple blooming. I picked these up on clearance, I think for like 20 cents last year at Walmart. So yeah, I'm just so excited to see them bloom. I need to come in and just clean up my hosta here and then also cut back the spent blooms on my hydrangea. This one is a macrophylla, so I'm just going to come in right under the base and cut it off there so I don't risk snipping off this year's blooms. But look, y'all, it is starting to leaf out. I am so excited. Oh, yeah. So I also need to clean up around my lungwort and then have a few perennials I need to cut back. My annuals are still in the ground from last season, and then I need to cut back my lamb's ear around the tree there. These are actually tulips. So you see these poking up here? Those are tulips that I popped in the ground, I wanna say five years ago now. They don't bloom, I just get leaves every year, so I think I'm gonna try and pull those bulbs out. But yeah, let's go ahead and get to clean up in this front bed. I think this will be quick work, and then we'll move on to the next project. So apparently I threw away all of my pruners last year at the end of the season, so gotta run to the hardware store first. We can't clean up without pruners. Got some new pruners, now we can clean up. Quickly, I'm going to take a minute and explain what I'm doing here. I always get a lot of questions on how I maintain this nice type ring for my lamb's ear. As we know, lamb's ear does like to spread and sometimes can be invasive. This is actually a non-seeding variety. So this one just spreads by creeping stems that like to root along the soil. Those stems are not thick at all, so it's very easy to pull out or cut out sections that you don't want them to grow. So I basically start off just by cleaning out any old dead foliage so I can see where the plant is and then I give it a nice harsh cut back, pretty much back down to the ground so it can just flush out with new growth. So basically I start out by pulling out all of the dead foliage first so I can see where the roots are and what I'm working with. And then I'll go in and cut back some pieces. So can you see this rhizome sticking up here? This one is gonna start growing towards the tree, which I don't want. 
So I'm gonna go in and just snip that one off down to the base, just like that. Any stems that I see that are growing in the direction that I don't want them to grow, I just go in and snip those off. It's as easy as that, you guys. I know it looks super harsh, but trust me, lamb's ear is a very resilient plant and it will come back beautifully every single year. So this side of my ring is a newer planted side. I did used to have the ring just planted in a semicircle on the outside of the tree. And then last spring I came in and filled this side in. So I do want this to fill in over the season. So I'm gonna be a little less harsh and just clean up the dead foliage on this side. So I'm just gonna finish cleaning up this ring and then we'll move on to the next project. All right, so I finished cleaning up the ring around my tree, which I cannot wait to see this fill in. Also finished cutting back all of the perennials in this bed. Looks like Rosie needs to be balanced out. She's been blown over a couple times in the storms last year, so I'll fix her in a little bit. But yeah, you guys, front bed is all done. Let's move on to cutting back my hydrangea. So here is one of four of the limelight trees on standard I have around my property. And this one, I think I'm actually just gonna cut it back. I've already started trimming it. Um, but I think I'm gonna cut it back and then relocate it to another location just because this one has uprooted at least six times in the storms last year, just because my gutter right here it runs out past the tree, but it stays really, really moist here. So anytime we get a bunch of rain or wind, this tree just uproots. So I think I'm gonna relocate it to a different area in the yard. fun skating you ready don't fall <laughs> okay so I finished priming it but I think I actually want to take it down to here all the way around just so the tree will be more uniform and encourage new growth Okay, so I've got the tree cut down how I like it and I can't wait to see it regrow. Next task, tackling my fountain grasses. I should have bought more bungee cords. Okay y'all, so I attempted this method a couple years ago and it did not work out in my favor. Basically, I'm using two bungee cords to try and tie up the straw so that I don't have a huge mess to clean up in the end. And we'll see if it works. I am highly allergic to fountain grass, so I do have to wear long sleeves because I will break out in hives. So wish me luck. Let's see how this goes.
Well, my trimmers died on me, so I'm gonna try and manually shape these and work on cleaning up the hay. And hopefully, once the battery charges, I can finish this last one back here. Right, two down, one more left to go. Over here in my tree ring, I know it's really hard to see because the sun is out and it's really harsh shadows, so I'm so sorry you guys. I'll try to give you some close-up shots, but I do have some perennial verbena in here that's planted right around the outer rim where you see my finger is and all the leaves. Just need to go in and trim those back, and then I also have my hookahs coming back. Let me give you guys a close-up. Okay, can you see here? This is my verbena coming back, you guys. I'm so excited about it. So I do need to come in and just trim off all of the spent blooms over here in the bed. And then also gonna cut back my hookera. So, so pretty. And look at all the new growth coming in. I'm so excited. I do have some annual geraniums tucked in between, which I'm gonna leave them a little bit longer just to see if they come up. If not, I'll just pull them out, it's fine. But yeah, I'm gonna do some really quick cleanup in this bed and then we'll move on to the backyard. Alright, so now we're moving on to what I like to call my shade garden. As you can see, the morning sun is just starting to move around to the back side of the house. So I'm going to move on to cleaning this bed up next. But first and foremost, do you guys see how clean my house is? Like, look at that. Oh, it looks so, so good. So basically the contractors that came to do my fence repair gave me an amazing deal to go ahead and pressure wash both my house and my fence. And I just could not pass up that deal. I'm so happy to be starting off the season with a fresh, clean slate. Y'all know the side of my house is always super moldy starting out. So I love how clean it looks. It looks so good. So now let's go ahead and move on to tackling the beds. Stepping back, I'm going to start off with my bushes here. These are three distillium that I picked up on clearance. I want to say about four or five years ago at this point. They have never been shaped or trimmed. I just let them grow because they were in such rough safe when I picked them up. But yeah, I'm going to go in and give these a nice haircut. And then I also need to come in and clean up some of my perennials in this bed. I have two geraniums that I need to clean up back there. Some hookahs as well as my lungwort. And then I also have a few hostas peeking through. And then also my other lungwort down here as well as my anemone. And then here I do still need to hook up my new hose as well as my drip, but I think I'm gonna hold off on that for now until it warms up a bit. Moving right along, down along my front curve here, I had planted some candy tough snow drift, or so I thought. Really not seeing any activity on that here, so not sure. If not, we can just plant some beautiful annuals. And then back in this area, I have some perennials that still have not peeked through yet. I have some hostas as well as my um, Solomon seal that has not peeked through. Some lovely weeds I need to clean up back there I never got to last year. And then I have my spiral here, you guys. And I think I'm gonna wait to trim this until we get out of the freezing temperatures. We're supposed to be in the teens next week. So yeah, I think I'm gonna hold off on that for now. And then moving on, my hydrangeas back here, y'all. I'm so excited for how these did. If you guys remember, I picked these up on clearance and cut them back super, super short last year. Like, let me show y'all. This is how low I had cut them back last year. And all of this is new growth that they put on in the last season. So I'm excited to see how much they grow this year. I am gonna trim those back as well. These hydrangeas do bloom on new wood, they're sublimes, so I can trim them back and they'll flush out with new growth this year. 
also plan on getting my window box installed hopefully later this season which I'm excited about I have a calla lily here I need to clean up it looks super gross <laughs> and then I also have a few hostas that have not started peeking through to fill in this space here as well as some calla lilies and then down in front I have a nice little hellebore that is trying to come back you guys I got this one on clearance for two dollars and fifty cents so I'm just gonna let it do its thing. I have a bunch more further down the bed. There's another one right here. And I'm so excited to see these in bloom. Like, look at that. So, so pretty. And I have more over here, you guys. I just packed out this bed with hellebores. I got so many, but I was not expecting to have a white one. Like, they weren't labeled. So it's always just a nice surprise in the garden when you see things come into bloom and you don't know what they are. So I just love they're happy little faces. It's just so nice to have some color in the bed this time of year. Like, look at this bloom. Oh, so gorgeous. So yeah, I will do a slight trimming on these just to clean up some of the old foliage, not too much. And then back behind them, I do have my rhododendron, which y'all, I'm not sure I'm gonna keep this here. It looks like it's still struggling. It goes through this every single spring and it just, Anywhere I put it in the yard, it's not thriving. So I'll probably keep it through the spring, let it bloom, and it may be coming out later this year. Not quite sure. And then behind it, I do have an acanthus tucked in back there. So I need to clean that up as well. I'll do my spiral a little bit later, but yeah, y'all, this bed is so weed free. I'm so pleased with it. And then lastly, down here on my curve, I have my gorgeous hyacinth bulbs that I picked up on clearance from Walmart. I think I got them for like 20 cents a piece. In between them, these are actually dianthus. So I know they look like weeds, but this is actually a small little dianthus plug. I have them popped in pretty much in between the bulbs, so I have some color throughout the summer. Really hoping that they come back. Um, we'll just see how they do. But yeah, I'm so excited for the hyacinth bulbs to start blooming. I cannot wait for their fragrance. It smells heavenly.
Okay y'all, so now we are down to the last bit of cleanup. I'm gonna tidy up my hellebores here. So I'm gonna go in and remove all the old leaves like this one here. I'm gonna take that off. So all I'm gonna do is go in and make a snip down at the base of the stem and I'm gonna discard this old foliage. So that way the plant can focus all of its energy on producing out new foliage. So I'm just gonna go in and finish cleaning these up and then we will move on to the next step. All right, you guys, shade garden cleanup is all done. It looks so much better and it feels so good to have this bed all tidied up. The only thing I have left to do in this bed is trim up my spirals, which I am gonna wait until the night temperatures are above freezing. And I also need to trim my topiaries, but yeah, you guys, this bed is all ready to go. I think I still have enough time to get to fertilizer. So here's what I'm gonna be using to fertilize. This is Plantone by Espoma. Really, really great all-purpose plant food. I love this fertilizer. If you guys are looking for something all-purpose or don't know what fertilizer to use, grab this one. You can't go wrong with it just because you can pretty much use this on any plant. You can use it on trees, shrubs, vegetables, flowers. As you can see down here, all of them are listed and it will feed them all season long. This isn't granules, so it does have to be watered in. We're expecting rain all this week. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down. I only fertilize once a year and that is late winter, early spring, just to give my plants a nice boost coming out of that dormancy. So unfortunately I didn't realize that my mic was off so I lost my audio for these next few clips. But all I'm explaining here is that this fertilizer does not smell the best, you guys. So I do highly recommend using a mask when you're spreading this down. I've just pretty much gotten used to it over the years, so it doesn't really bother me. I do like to use my mug here. It has a nice handle to make it easier for scooping. And all I'm going to do is go around each plant and sprinkle a little bit of fertilizer right around the drip line or the base of the plant. I personally don't like to measure. There are measurements on the back of the bag that you can follow for instructions to how to measure and fertilize properly. You are more than welcome to follow those instructions, but I just pretty much eyeball it. I make sure each plant gets enough fertilizer to feed it throughout the entire season. This is an organic granule, so it won't burn your roots. And yeah, that's pretty much it, you guys. I'm gonna continue fertilizing and then we will move on to my fence reveal. My battery finally finished charging, so I was able to get this last grass cut back down to the ground. So now I just need to let them regrow. All of this you will not even see because they get so massive that it covers the entire area. All right, last but not least, let's take a look at the new fence update. Look at the new fence. Oh, y'all, I know it looks the same as it did before, but it feels so good to finally have the fence reconstructed and I can put this whole fence nightmare behind me. Like if you guys are new to my channel and have not been following along over the years, I have literally been dealing with fence construction going on three years now at this point, And I'm just so over it. I'm ready to have that behind me and just move on with my gardening life and my plans. So yeah y'all so basically what they ended up doing is replacing just three of my posts so that one here this one and this one they were actually able to keep that one so i was able to return one of the posts that i purchased which is awesome um, and they did end up having to put a ring of cement around the base just to hold the post in place and then they also put some concrete inside of it just for extra reinforcement because unfortunately these are five by five vinyl posts the way they connect, you cannot put a two by four or a four by four inside of them. So hopefully, as long as we don't get any crazy windstorms and nothing else smashes into my fence, I shouldn't have any issues. There are a few minor details that are bothering me and that's just me being super nitpicky. Like if you can see, let me stand over here. Down here, do y'all see that gap in the fence? 
I have another gap over here and then also a larger one over here which these gaps were not here before and I don't know it kind of bothers me but it kind of doesn't I think it's because they had such a hard time getting this post out they had to bump this one up a little bit higher so as you can see it's not completely level which is okay um, it's also sitting back out a little bit further and I will give you guys a shot of the back side of the fence in a few minutes but I think that's what's causing that gap over there so I'm actually kind of happy that the fence was destroyed you guys I know that sounds really weird but it's given me time to rethink my plans and come up with a new design to disguise the imperfection. So all of this will be changing. <laughs> I know, I know y'all, but I'm so excited to bring my new vision to life and share it with you guys. I will be closing in the gap under the fence over here. I had them throw in just their extra dirt to build up the beds. I still have a lot more I need to add over here, but I will continue building my beds out. And then all of these plantings, will probably be changing like all of my buckthorns will be coming out this tree over here will be coming out still so sad that I lost my blue cypress here I still think I want a blue structure in the yard but I'm not sure if it's going to go in this location so that will be changing and then pretty much everything else that I just kind of popped in the ground really all I did last year was just put stuff in the ground so it could survive last summer so nothing is in its final location y'all know how I am about my balance and symmetry like why is this juniper just randomly sitting there? Like, it just looks so out of place. So yeah, a lot of that will be changing, which will be coming in future videos. The guys did also pressure wash my entire fence, so everything is fresh and clean. If y'all remember in my last video, there was a lot of mold growing on the back side of my fence here, so it feels good to start off with a fresh, clean slate. One less thing I have to do on my to-do list. I'm so thrilled with it. So yeah, y'all, that is the update on the fence. So yeah, y'all, that is pretty much gonna wrap up today's cleanup. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and hanging out with me today. I hope you found it inspirational. Like, oh, it just feels so good to have like my front yard, my side yard, everything is on drip and automated and it's all fertilized. Like I didn't plan on doing that much today. Whoever commented on my last video and said, pace yourself, take your time. That's an unknown dimension to me. <laughs> like literally, I just planned on cleaning up just the front bed, cutting back the perennials today, doing a little by little, and I just got in full blown, let's just knock it all out today. So I knocked out the fertilizer, knocked out cutting back everything. So pretty much the front bed just needs to fill in. I will come in and plant my annuals as I normally do. And then the shade garden will have some changes eventually, but I just feel really good having all of the front kind of buttoned up so it gives me more time to focus on making my backyard vision come to life and the first thing we'll be going to be starting on try not to make y'all dizzy but my bay window bed like that is probably gonna be my next project I cannot stand looking at that that is my view when I first wake up in the morning so again thank you guys so so much for tuning in I hope you found this video inspirational and it's inspiring you to get out and start your cleanup I'll catch you guys in my next video peace